All right, uh, first night of the tour, I loved the title, Blotto Biography, but then the more I thought about it, it seemed too clever. Maybe it'll grow on me again, but uh, the first one was uh, in Houston, Texas with Rob Mungle, amongst others, perhaps? I don't know. One day I'll do a podcast about not remembering doing my podcast. All right, people, welcome to another episode of What the Heck... I'm Doug Stanhope. What's up, all you uh, what the hexters, what the hextables, what the hecklers, what the hexakins, what the hectards, you know, still trying to quit smoking, haven't uh, succeeded yet. Going to give it a, another uh, nine minutes about that, then we'll get to the guest that you wanted to hear. All right. Uh, this is a, a rough draft or an interstitial of my podcast, uh, my blotto biography, my memory is shit from all the years of abusing it. I remember none of my life like I've wasted it until I see old friends from the day. And they go, hey, do you remember that one time where we got uh, drugged by a uh, parking lot because we were black from the back of a pickup truck? And you go, oh, oh, yeah, no, I do remember now. Or whatever. We're in Houston, Texas at the Improv a place that you can always forget because they all look the same, like the blacks <laughs> or the whites. That's the last thing white people stole from the blacks is now white people all look the same with your fucking baseball hat and your affliction shirt. <laughs> with uh, uh, one of the guys from the day, legend of Houston, Rob Mungle. R- Rob yeah. Mungle. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we got some Thank fake you, morning radio cheers. Yeah, that's that. what that is. <laughs> hey. Rob yeah. Mungle, I and again, this is one of those memories that I didn't remember till I started drinking. And I'm going, Bingo, you remember Mungle? And she's like, I don't know. She's her memory's as bad as mine, right. From all the fucking medications she takes, and she's a new newfound drunk <laughs> over the last few years. <laughs> but uh, and then I remembered as you were going up, I'm like, No, Mungle's the guy. I always tell this story. About Mungle went up at open mic. This is probably yeah. 1997. Yeah, oh, God, easy. And Ro- again, he, even back then, he's a killer. Everyone knows. Everyone goes into the room when Mungle's on. <laughs> and he did like uh, 10 or 12 topical jokes from the news that were the fucking worst <laughs> jokes ever. <laughs> And even the comics in the back are going, what the fuck is he doing? Yeah. These are awful jokes. This is- and the crowd is dead, and he keeps plowing through with such confidence. <laughs> and at the end, he lets the pregnant pause lie and says, Thank you. All those jokes were taken from Jay Leno's monologues last week. <laughs> I just wanted you to see how he would do if he was in a real comedy club. <laughs> And we fucking died. Like, oh, God damn it, that's genius. Uh, and I tell that story to this day. Yeah, those were shit. Those were garbage. I still use three of them, though. That's the bad thing. <laughs> I, I opened with one of them. Fuck. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You know what the great thing my buddy Andy Huggins said about Leno was that uh, he, he was still doing OJ jokes, even like three years ago. And Huggins, and Huggins said, uh, you know, Ron Goldman's going to get it, let it go before fucking Leno will. <laughs> Ron <laughs> Goldman's going to say, the man has a life. Let him live his life, yeah, for God's funny. sake. Huggins is funny. I don't yeah. know who's still around from and the there's day. There's nobody. I was telling a story on stage about when we took Ralphie May here in Houston. Houston was a scene. Oh, it was great. I, as recently as yesterday, I had someone email me and go, hey, uh, where's a, uh, a good place for new comics to start? And I, I haven't been a new comic for <laughs> you know, at least 20 years. Boston in 1992. Yeah, like, yeah. Great place Houston. To start. There was a couple of scenes. There was Minneapolis was a scene when I first started, and Hedberg was around up there. And then Houston was a great scene. You were here when my dad died. I had to fucking leave. That was you, right? I don't think so. No, I don't believe so. That was another time we Jesus, were together. Who was I fucking working with? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Tell the story about tell the story about the picture of your dad yeah. that you show. No, no, I want to keep this Houston and Mungle right <laughs> Oh, wait, wait I, all right. Now I'm uh, uh, the Henry Phillips story. Yeah. Oh, the whorehouse oh, yeah, story. The whorehouse. You would remember this better Yeah, than me. We, uh, Doug and I 
or and Henry Phillips were working at the Laugh Stop, and uh, Henry wants to go to a whorehouse. And so I knew I probably wanted to go yeah. too. Don't put it all on Henry. And so Henry says, "Hey, do you know any?" I was like, "Yeah, I know a, f- a few." So we go, and the way I remember it is, you were saying, "Hey, do you want to go to a whorehouse?" <laughs> but again, our memories are both flawed. Yeah, they, we're yes, old men. They're not perfect. They're Swiss cheese. But we go, and I tell Henry, "Listen, here's the deal: the girls are going to come out, and you pick one." And then you go upstairs and do whatever. And he gives me like a hundred bucks. He says, because he just got paid that night. He had like a grand in his pocket. He says, this is the rest of my money. I'm just taking a hundred bucks up there. I says, all right, dude. Says, Which means you you're not getting yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and I tell him, look, dude, if you don't like one of the girls, we'll go to another place. As soon as we get there, the girls come out. Henry goes, that one right there. That one, that one. <laughs> said, all right. He goes upstairs. He says, whatever you do, don't give me the money. Don't give me the fucking money. (laughs) No matter how much I bang (laughs) on this door (laughs) with the monster, don't let me out. I'm in the fucking lobby reading a Time magazine from 1973. No, I got another girl. I went (laughs) up. Oh, you went up. Yeah, I went up and uh, I I guess I got second string. (laughs) But second string will work with you on the price and actually pay off. Mm Mm-hmm. Henry, meanwhile, has a hundred dollars. Yeah, and so I'm in the lobby reading the, the Time magazine from '73. Well, wait, wait, wait! Let's back up a second. Rob Mungle says we're going to a whorehouse. Like we're all gonna fuck chicks. Yeah. Henry and I go in and look at them, and they're laughing at us and walking away from the girl. Like, all right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the Three Stooges hey, they got thing where they go the feature and headliner money. I was getting opener money back yeah. then. So I didn't have the money for hand jobs. Yeah, they said uh, it's like the Stooges bit where they say, "Okay, whichever one of you step forward," and the two step back. <laughs> well, they all stepped back, and Henry and I are walking up with grotesque. Women at some fucking highway off ramp massage parlor. Yeah. yeah. From some of the girls from the finest families in yeah. all the Houston area. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, the yeah, Henry I'm, Phillips. Yeah, I'm downstairs. Henry Phillips, he said, Don't don't give me the money. I'm just gonna go up there and give the hundred. I'm sitting down there. Henry comes walking down ten minutes later. Give me the money, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money. I was like, I'm not giving no, give me the fucking money. I was like, I'll give you half. <laughs> <laughs> Doug gets done <laughs> And so we're sitting there And we're like what are we going to do Like, Well there's a strip club across the street We got Henry's money <laughs> So we go over to the strip club across the street Get fucked up <laughs> No Henry I gave you 600 you, I didn't give you 5 See I don't remember that part my, my initial instinct As my own defense attorney Would be I would never go to a strip club after I dumped a load. That has to be false. If I, I think I dragged, a, I dragged I, you to if it. If I just fucked a whore, I'm not going to sit and act like I want another one. I'm going to be ashamed and go home. Let's go back to the Allen Park Inn. <laughs> where it's like I, eating a steak and then said, who wants to go to McDonald's? <laughs> Doug, how much do you remember of this at all, this story right now? Because you're doing This is Junior Stopka. He's well, he's like the one guy that I think has hope of I can help him because he's young and polite and ambitious mm-hmm. and he doesn't fuck up. And he's uh, not Andy Andrus stealing fucking <laughs> bottles of alcohol on a fucking documentary from behind a comedy club. <laughs> like maybe this guy has hope and ambition. Junior Stopko. And I've only known you for f- four or five years. Mm-hmm. So, f- yeah, tell me one of those stories because we're going back. Me and Mungle, <laughs> Rob Mungle. Did uh, I even introduce Mungle? Yeah, you did. All you right. did. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell me. I'll tell a sweet story about Doug. How about that, huh? Everybody says, oh, this guy fist fucked a, a dude with his, <laughs> with his foot on accident. <laughs> How did he get both of them up there? Here's my story. We were in Catachuga in Tennessee. Chattanooga. Whatever. Catachuga. <laughs> Junior just went out for his first road trip. He's barely left Chicago ever in August. He, I like, hey, you want to go on the road? And he's like, yeah. And he went on a military website to learn how to fold clothes. <laughs> Bingo how am I had to fit everything in there. Bingo had to show him how to use a roller bag because he, he didn't know how to push the button in to get the handle up. Like, it's, it's like you, you relive all the early years of your career right. working with him. He's sweet, but he's funny and he drinks and he smokes, mm-hmm. so he's palatable. Like, you can be around yeah. him, but he's also like, like a child. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do cocaine with that guy in the toilet. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> is it my birthday? <laughs> Go ahead. I always have a Cheshire smile when I do anything new. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, we were in Chicago at uh, some rock club on the south side, and, and this is a sweet Doug story. Aww. Doug, Doug, he don't remember shit, which is great because... <laughs> That way you don't have to feel shame or regret <laughs> or <laughs> or apologize yeah, at it's all. It's like a good confession. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, after the show is done, the, I'm drunk, obviously, and I drunk drive all the time. Sorry. Um, although I hit somebody sober recently. Yeah, go, go. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did not. I did don't, not. Don't go off track here. Uh, so, the, Doug leaves. He's he's going to the airport or airport bar, which is <laughs> just, he just wants a close bar to where he's sleeping all the time. So then Doug just goes, "Nobody fucks Junior Stopka tonight. I'm never coming back." <laughs> and uh, if no I, one fucks Junior Stopka tonight, I'm yeah, not coming back. That's what you said. I don't know if you're doing bravado, but <laughs> I just. I, I just want to say those who can't do <laughs> teach. I, I just want to say I'm not coming back to Chicago again. Because <laughs> nobody fucked me oh. yeah, No, no, no. I, but that I is gotta, sweet of you listen, he's This, gonna, he's this was a big clever bit you free, This was the punchline All right. I'm done <laughs> <laughs> What was the, So no one fucked you? Well, there was a handsome No, I got a, I got a gal who, who doesn't like that So no well, You didn't at the time Oh, yeah you, You've got a girlfriend? You have a girlfriend? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, he's How do I not have out. a girlfriend? And this guy looks That's like... That's the thing. It's and like she, Kurt Cobain got put in a pet cemetery. He's pulling <laughs> pussy. <laughs> well, Bingo's not on Twitter. <laughs> so I can I can talk a lot of shit, but his girlfriend is, and she's yeah. they're young. Oh. So there's still, like, jealousy and shit. So, like, even if I was joking around trying to get Junior pussy after a show, and she heard yeah. about it from some asshole fucking YouTubing, he'd pay some <laughs> kind of price. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches be tripping. <laughs> bitches oh, be tripping. Yes. <laughs> what? Not all bitches. No, all bitches be tripping. You're not a bitch. That's why you're not tripping. Well, you know why? Because <laughs> they're very uncoordinated. Because they're black. <laughs> 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 That's another stereotype yeah. busted. Yeah. Black people don't have dexterity. I reminded I reminded <laughs> Doug of this uh, earlier, but I could do it on the podcast. I once went on tour with this motherfucker in the middle of texas and yeah i was gonna fly to the last or i was gonna drive with him through the, the tour fly back from the last one to houston and he picks me up at my house do you remember the kind of car it was a white little bitty car dodge neon yeah it was a dodge wow, neon yeah, that was yeah. the christine hodge days i just got dumped by christine hodge from yes. uh whatever the what was that show head of the, head of the, the class, class. Yeah, you were dating her, and she she had cheated on you with, like, the Prince of Monaco. Monaco. Yeah. I remember doing yeah. the bit. I go, I'm not going to tell you who he is, but I'll tell you what he does for a living. <laughs> He's a Prince of Monaco. <laughs> Genius. So he just got dumped, and he picks me up in the middle of August in Houston, Texas, where it's 900 degrees, and says, get in the car. We get in the car. They turn on the air. Uh, I can't. There's no air conditioning in this car. <laughs> Why the fuck is there no air? Well, I like to sweat when I drive. So he's driving around like fucking Tarzan for fucking <laughs> 600 miles through fucking desert of Texas. I'm sweating my balls off. I was and, thin back then. And this is the way, this is he I was, was so upset that his fucking girlfriend was fucking the he didn't drink the whole fucking time oh yeah i went on yeah. tour i was uh, with yeah. doug I was stanhope and i was the drunk i, I yeah <laughs> i was yeah wait a minute you did a show sober he did like four this shows. was in the 90s Can you <laughs> keep this in mind and that's kept, why we call oh, it we're not gonna drink i'm not drinking i'm just going back to the room i was like are you fuck i was are you sad kidding me? I told oh him, I'm i was going sad on the road with doug stanhope and I, I went gone through a out with few fucking depression. Oral Roberts. Wait a minute, what, was the, what was the phase that you stopped drinking? Like, how did you put that it in your mind? It was just that week when I got dumped. Yeah. And, well, she thought I, I was an alcoholic and uh, she hated cigarettes. So, yeah, you do dumb shit for chicks <laughs> both ways. You go crazy and stalk them or you stop drinking. Oh, yeah. Both are self destructive. That's why you took the ear. <laughs> that's why you took the earring out of your ear. Yeah, I, I stopped wearing an earring, and that's where that joke comes from now when I mention the silver-haired fox with the Jägermeister thing, is because 
my agent's assistant was a really hot chick. And she goes, and I'm only like 31 or something at this point. She goes, why do you wear that earring? You look like an old guy trying to look young. <laughs> and that's one of those things. You, you go home and you take that fucking earring out <laughs> and you bury it like a pet. <laughs> you bury that like a dead fucking pet and you're ashamed. I remember Christine Hodge. She thought she was pregnant for a minute and was talking to her best friend Lily on a cell phone in the bedroom and said, oh, I found out I'm not pregnant. Thank God. I can't imagine a baby with those yellow smoker stained <laughs> chip teeth. What? And I've never smiled correctly since. <laughs> that was 1998. And I fucking have never smiled comfortably. <laughs> I uh, think I, I think I'm miserable on purpose, to, so it gives me a reason not to smile. <laughs> My ex-wife used to love Doug. No, she was awful. I yeah. forgot about her. <laughs> oh, yeah, that fucking cunt. Anyway, <laughs> I, when I got divorced, Doug was in Austin, and she called me. Said, "Hey, Doug's in Austin. I'm going to try to fuck him tonight, just to piss you off." <laughs> I don't know if you ever did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if it was recently, I might have tried to smush it at her. <laughs> I don't think it happened. She would have called me and told me, but I don't think it happened. Yeah, I've tried to cheat on my girlfriend and failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now I don't have to be honest with her because it never got, never quite got in. <laughs> uh. Good times. Yes. Uh, if it's not by the cleat, it's not a cheat. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought Clit Ryan would cheat. So. <laughs> and then I realized it didn't. And then I... I That's what softball playing bull dykes say. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a fucking good podcast. Is it? Cause all, that's where it's all got, the fucking great like, comedy stories come from. Like when you when you listen to comics and oh where'd you how'd you start and you started in Boston who gives a fuck <laughs> tell me the part where you fucking kicked a girl in the cunt and you got thrown out of the club and they never booked you back <laughs> I like this uh, we should yeah. Go, yeah you should do this yeah <laughs> yeah we'll we'll put a we'll string a few together should I start recording <laughs> <laughs> should I start recording says Chaley. <laughs> For the record, Joe Rogan, every time Chaley fucks up, I go, Red Band would have had this done. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Inside podcast comedy. I play to the back of the podcast is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my angle. <laughs> Somewhere there's a kid in Omaha who gets it. <laughs> I got that reference. I know what I'm talking about. I got nothing to do outside of podcast. Jack and Dino, you got anything? Jack and Dino is a good friend. Every time we need a title for something, uh, several times. I had before turning the gun on himself as two album titles that were both declined at the last minute by the record company. <laughs> so uh, no refunds was supposed to be before turning the gun on himself. And one of the other, the fucking Deadbeat Hero. Deadbeat Hero. Deadbeat Hero. <laughs> and at the last minute, we need a new, one of the times it was right after the fucking Virginia Tech shooter. And they're like, we can't <laughs> do this now. So I'd call Jack and Dino, fucking uh. give me some. And he'd just have a list of 40 fucking titles. <laughs> So, yes. Any good stories? <laughs> Do you remember the time that this this isn't going to make you like not smile again or whatever your other <laughs> stories were doing? But remember when we got kicked out of uh, Hotel Derek with Walsh? No, we got kicked out of a hotel. We just get kicked out of you a hotel to, last weekend in Cincinnati. No, we were we were down in the restaurant at the Hotel Derek after one of the Friday I shows. remember that night. Yeah. I and was there. There was uh, this is in Houston or yeah, hotel yeah, there, yeah. yeah. And it's so did we girl. steal a leather jacket? No, no, no. <laughs> no. All right. Oh, all right, all right. That's a different time at a hotel, Derek. <laughs> uh, we were with uh, Brendan Walsh and Mungle, and Doug was there, and we were at the hotel, Derek. Hotel and Derek. We were down right. in the like restaurant before they redid it, and just hanging out and talking. And some girl just came down and sat in my lap, just totally kills the conversation and she was like really good looking girl 
and then she was making her boyfriend jealous, and then you know he was one of those affl- he was affliction literally affliction shirt guy, <laughs> and got he he came over he was fine at that point, but you know she goes away with him. We end up going back upstairs, and we're just hanging out, just hammered, fucking drunk, and it's like three o'clock in the morning. We start hearing some woman yelling down the hall like can somebody give me a ride home i need a ride home is anybody can somebody give me a ride home for this asshole no you shut up and it's this him is the, and the girl walsh was next door to us and they came up to throw him out and then we we got him into our room as like an embassy yeah no we were we were in your room at the time Walsh had gone out and started yeah. arguing with them again it's like three in the morning yeah and, and Walsh is bringing this to a higher level outside yeah. our room and then security comes up well before even that like we just he's yelling at the guy so we Doug and I just drop trowel and walk out <laughs> of the hall and like what the fuck's going on we're trying to sleep in here that's the thing I remember myself as the cooler of this situation <laughs> I forget the part where I walk out with my fucking balls hanging out <laughs> well, we get well out it was there. a Wednesday so. <laughs> well we got out there and as soon as you know we're out there then see the security guy out of the corner of my eye. I hear the door close behind me because Doug's gone back into the room, and I'm just out there standing with my <laughs> pants down with Walsh, and Walsh is just yelling. <laughs> it's like, you guys, t- 15 minutes, you're out of here. So Walsh and I just go back to the room, you know, pants up at that point. But <laughs> Like scolded starts, children. Yeah, well... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had my pants out in the hallway. And he's... Walsh is in the room just yelling, the motherfucker through the door. The guy's standing out. We're right next to where the elevators are. And the guy's just nonstop going, you piece of shit, fucking assholes, God, motherfucking thing. And they, like, for, like, five minutes and then sticks his head out. Are you really kicking us out? <laughs> <laughs> and now that guy's right. on the back. This is the wrap of the, uh, the first Doug Stanhope Blotto Biography series of podcasts. We don't have a name yet, but it's not <laughs> it's no longer the Doug Stanhope I don't have a podcast cuz I think this warrants a podcast. And, and may I drop so, a, a a plug for my podcast, yes, Doug? The, uh, the Whiskey, the Whiskey Brother, Brothers. Whiskey Brother podcast. You can find us at praisewhiskey.com. Yes, I want I want to hear uh the episode with Mike McCray doing Mitt Romney <laughs> doing the aristocrats. What do you know what number? Um I have it I, it's on YouTube actually. Oh, the, whi- the whiskey brother have just that bit. If you cu- if you cut it down, oh, you have just yeah, that it's bit. Just that bit. Fucking email me that I will. bit, so I- I'll plug that on. Fucking uh, what's that? <laughs> what's the new one? MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> is it LinkedIn? <laughs> I'm a little behind the times. <laughs> this is the last stupid podcast that you'll have to hear. <laughs> All right, Junior Stopka, Jack and Dino, Rob Mungle. Along with, uh, of course, Greg Chaley and Bingo. That's it. We'll 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 uh, we'll sew this together with a, uh, some other Brett Erickson <laughs> stories. We're gonna see him on the road. Who fucking knows who we're gonna see on this three weeks? And uh, you'll hear this shit someday. <laughs>